And we're going to start reading at the 13th verse down to the 15th verse. Now I'll be reading from the New King James Version. St. John, the 13th chapter, beginning at the third verse. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he, had, he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Yeah. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, you are not all clean. Mm -hmm. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? Mm -hmm. You call me teacher and Lord. And you say, well, for, I, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, mm -hmm. you also ought to wash one another's feet. Mm -hmm. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. And we're going to read the 16th verse. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant mm -hmm. is not greater than his master, uh -huh. nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. 17th verse. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 
Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we come, Lord God, to do your will, Lord God. Lord, we pray that there will decrease and you increase in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, Lord God, that they don't see me, but they see you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray, Lord God, that your word be effective today in the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you and we praise you. Use me for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, the topic this morning is great people serve. That's the Lord. And I would like to begin by saying to the ushers that you have an awesome responsibility because you represent the church. You are the first person that people come in contact with when they come in them doors. Praise the Lord. Your personality, your words, how you act, and I will even add how you look. Your facial expression set the tempo for the worship service. And it determines whether or not the people are going to come back. It's important that you be on time and that you have prayer before you get on the door. Because you don't know what kind of attitude you're going to face coming in them doors. And if you ain't prayed up, and somebody comes in with a bad attitude, well, you get what you get. Because if somebody comes in with a bad attitude and you ain't prayed up, well, then they say something wrong to you, you're going to say something wrong back to them. And it's also important that you don't show favoritism. That's the Lord. There's a, a, a passage in the Bible that says if a man comes in with richly apparel, Come on. he's all dutied up and he's got his jewelry and stuff on. Mm -hmm. And then here comes somebody in that's poor looking. Come on. Now you're going to usher the rich person all the way up to the front. But the poor person, you tell them to sit where you want. Well, can I have favorites? And a lot of times that I know when I was ushering, when you usher people to their seat, you strut, you ushering, and then when you get there and do this, and you look back, they don't sit down back right there. You got to take it with a smile. <laughs> the way you usher, it either has a good reflection or a bad reflection on the pastor. Amen. Amen. So you want to make your pastor look good? Usher good. Huh? Man. Ushers are to be always on the lookout. Somebody may need a fan. Right. Well, then you see to their needs. Ushers, you're to keep order in the church. Amen. And it's not an usher board. Right. It's an usher's ministry. In the Old Testament, they were called watchmen, doorkeepers, porters, gatekeepers, all the same. All the same. Still usher. You keep order in the church. That's the Lord. But if you want to be great, you got to serve. That's right. Now, in today's society, if you're rich and famous and you, you might be a celebrity or you might be a CEO of a company well. or some other big dignitary, well then those people expect because they're this and that to be served. 
But see, in the body of Christ, it's the opposite. Uh, in the body of Christ, just because you might be Reverend, Doctor, Apostle, so and so, don't mean that somebody has got to come and wipe your sweat. Come on now. Don't mean that somebody's got to come and put your robe on you or take your robe off of you. Huh? Don't mean that somebody's got to come and fan you. Don't mean that you sit down to the table come on, sir. waiting for somebody to come, come and serve you. Come on, come on. But you get up <laughs> and serve somebody else. That's the Lord. Great people serve. This story that we just read, it tells how Jesus washed the disciples' feet in an act of servanthood. Yes. Yes. Now, back in those days, they wore sandals. Yes. And the dirt yes. and the mud. Yes. <laughs> You're right. They got all in between their toes, yes. all up on their ankles. And everything. That's the Lord. And the servants, uh -huh. not the masters, That's right. were supposed to wash the feet. Wash the feet. Yeah. yeah. So Peter, thinking that he was supposed to be the one that was washing Jesus' feet, uh -huh. not Jesus washing washing Peter's feet. He said, Lord, now can you just imagine? Well. Can you just imagine? You aren't working, especially on the phone. Yeah. And y'all know how dusty and rusty we get oh, Lord. on the farm and your feet look like they got barnacles on. Amen. And can you imagine Jesus coming to you and telling you to sit down, let me wash your feet. Preach. So Peter said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus said, unless you let me do this, you don't have no part in me. Unless we serve one another, we don't have no part in Jesus Christ. Huh? We don't have no part. We've got to be willing to serve one another. If we say we love each other, well, then we should be willing to serve each other in any capacity Amen. that we can. Yes. Huh? Yes. Right. Even with your money. Yes. Come on. Sir, even with your money. Yes. Now, how do you do that? Well, if somebody needs something, you give it to them. Amen. Don't be saying, I ain't got it. Because little becomes much yes. when you put it in the master's hand. Bless and it's not all about giving money all the time. Right. Sometimes just need to take our time. Yes. Yes. Take somebody somewhere if they need to go to the store. Take them. If, 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 if they need to go to the doctor, take them. If they call you at 2 o'clock in the morning, well. Amen. Sister Mel, I need you. Can you come? <laughs> well, Bless the Lord. I'll be there in the morning. I'll be there at 8 o'clock. I'm asleep right now. I'll be there at 8 o'clock. Well, I need you now. I can't come there. Come on. I gotta wait. I gotta get the children off to school. I gotta pack my husband's lunch to get him off to work. Then I'll be there. No. Be willing to give up your time right then. Right then. The Bible says if your neighbor, if your neighbor knocks on your door in the middle of the night, 
and tell you that they need a loaf of bread. And you tell them come back in the morning. I need the bread now. I don't need it in the morning. Come on. Come on. My God, I'm hungry. I need something to eat right now. And you tell me come back in the morning. Preach. Lord, have mercy. But we've got to serve one another. Service starts in your mind. Yes, to be a servant, you've got to have the right attitude. You've got to have the right heart. Ushers, if your heart is not in ushering, but then you need to come back down to the footstools of mercy and get a change of heart. There's a lot of people that are serving and that have served in the body of Christ for years but haven't done it with the right heart. Right. Come on, Amen. come on. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 5 and 6 and 7, let this mind be in you, which, also. which was also in Christ Jesus, That's right. who being in the form of God, he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of what? No, no reputation. No reputation. No reputation. Even though he was he was God. Equal. Mm -hmm. hmm. Bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. He was his son. Yes. yes. He was great. Yes. Amen. But the Bible says, but made himself of no reputation, and he took on the on the form of a bond servant, which is a slave. Uh -huh. Amen. And coming in the likeness of men, and being found found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. Right Jesus now. humbled himself. He willingly took on the role as a servant. And not just a servant, but a slave. And a slave would do anything. Amen. Nothing is beneath a slave. And this is what we ought to be in the body of Christ. Thank you. To be a servant, you cannot be selfish and self-centered. And when I say selfish, it's all about it. It's me. Come on. It's me. What am I going to get out of it? Come on. Huh? Yeah. What's in it for me? Self-centered. Look what I get. Y'all know how some people are. Mm -hmm. Stick the chest like, mm -hmm. look what I did. All right. Mm -hmm. It ain't about that. Service. To be a servant, you have to die to self. You got to die. Yes. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. Yes. It's no longer I, but it's Christ that lives yes. in me. Uh, yes, Lord. We have to think of others more highly than we think of our of ourselves. Great people serve. Yes. Come on, come and on. God determines your greatness by the amount of people. How many people you serve, not how many people serve you. Come on. Huh? Come on. Service is ministry. And ministry is help. Yes. So being a servant is what? Just helping somebody. Praise God. No matter who they are, where they come from, what they look like, what they have on. If they're in need, then we're supposed to help. Yes. If we don't help, then we don't have the love of God in us. Yes. It ain't about us. That's right. But it's about Jesus. Yes. We are the only Jesus that the people are going to see. Mm -hmm. We have to serve each other. Now, Paul said, let's turn to it. In 1 Corinthians. Thank you, Lord. Teach, teach. The ninth, ninth chapter. And the 19th verse.
But see, as I said earlier, it's, it's, it's not about serve just a few people that are, are, are a few favorites. Amen. But we're to serve everybody. Even though God told us to serve one another, it starts with us. Amen. But Paul said, but though I am free from all men, I have made myself a what? A servant to all. To all. That I might what? Win the Lord. And to the Jews, he said, I became as a Jew. Jew. That I might win Jews. Jew. Uh, all right now. To those who are under the law, as under the law. That I might win those who are under the law. Come on, right. come on. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without the law. To the weak, uh -huh. I became weak. Come on. That I might what? Win the weak. Gain the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means what? Save some. Come on. Now, he says, now, this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. We got to serve all men, no matter who they are, saint or sinner. Come on. Saint or sinner. Saint or sinner. Right, amen. Huh? Right. Saint or sinner. And it's not hard serving people. It's not hard. You know when you when you when you're standing in line and you got especially in the express lane. And you got fifteen items. And there's somebody behind you that's just got one item. Yeah. Well, then there's somebody ahead of you. I was in the store one time, and and I was in the express lane, and it was it was I think it was two three people ahead of me, and then there was somebody behind me. They only had one or two items, and uh, but the person that the, the, the woman was waiting on, it was something wrong with their credit card or something, and. Uh, so I'm standing there. And people, you know, y'all know how people do. They turn around, look at you, smile, <laughs> and they want you to say something. <laughs> so I just stood there. I stood there. So then finally, he went on. So the person that was behind me, I said, "You can go ahead." And they said, "Are you sure?" I said, "Yes, you can go ahead." That's serving somebody. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. I done stood there all that long time. One more person won't go hurt nothing. That's right. <laughs> or if they don't have enough money to get what they're going to get, what they're getting, they need some change. Well, if you got it, give it to them. Amen. You're serving. My God, give it to them anyway just to get them right, get them all right because they're going to have to take something put back and you still going to wait. So why not go ahead and serve him by giving him some money? That's right. And people won't forget that. You may not see him again, but they'll go tell somebody what you did. Amen. Jesus said you can tell what a person is by what they do. Mm -hmm. Huh? So you can tell a Christian by what a Christian does. Come on. We have to serve others. Sometimes we may have to go in our closet and give something away to somebody that needs it. Huh? Amen. And sometimes God will tell you, give them your favorite outfit. <laughs> huh? Man. Right. I had, I had a, uh, I had a 
necklace and a pair of earrings on one time. And the woman said, said, oh, I like that. And the spirit was saying, give to him. Give to him. And I walked around and walked. <laughs> well, that's it. And the spirit said, give to him. Give to him. So somebody asked what talked to me. I said, wait a minute, I got something to do. So I took it off and gave it to him. Yes, Lord. But it's, it's serving. It ain't about me. Serving each other. Jesus left us an example. Example, yes, he did. In the book of Matthew, he said, For I was hungry and you gave me food. Huh? I was thirsty and you gave me something, and you gave me something to drink. Well, I was a stranger yeah. and you took me in. in. Well, I was naked, naked and you clothed me. Well, I was sick. And you visited me. Yeah. I was in prison. Well. And you came to me. That's it. And then, then the Bible says that then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see your home? When did we see your thirst? Well. When did we visit you when you were sick? Yeah. When did we clothe you? Well. When did we go to you when you were in prison? Come on. He said, inasmuch as you have done it unto the least. Uh -huh. Preach. You've done it unto me. Do all things to the glory and to the honor of God. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. One more thing I want to share to you. Ushers. Usher while you can. While you in your health and your strength. Turn to please ask the 12 chapter. That's the Lord. Bless her. Bring the asking. Teach us. Teach us. Remember. Ah. That's it. And we, we, we got some, some young, how many young ushers we got in here? Besides my Asia. <laughs> huh? It's two back here, three. Come on. Come on, put my head up here. <laughs> I, might, I might not be on the door, but I'm still an usher, so I help wherever I'm needed. But uh, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Now that first verse says, Remember... Now, your creator, in the days of your youth, because before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not dark, and the clouds do not return after the rain. Now listen, y'all listen. Now, now listen, this is where I'm going in. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come. Now the third verse. In the day when the keepers of the house trump. Now the keepers of the house is your arms and legs. Yes, yes. Go. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> And the strong men bow down. That's your legs and knees. That's your legs and knees now. Come on. When the grinders cease because they are few. That's your teeth. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. your teeth fall out. See, the teeth will start falling out. And usher before your teeth fall out. Because nobody, you standing on the door. And you got all these teeth that's done fell out your mouth. First impression is your last impression. Huh? Amen. Then it says, and those that look through the windows, bro, them, that's your eyes. See, you gotta see where you lead people. If you can't, if you if you can't see. 
then you can't lead nobody up them all. That's right. Huh? Somebody will have to lead you. <laughs> it says, when the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of grinding is low, you got to eat some food, see? <laughs> You gotta eat some food. And, uh, the, and, the, and the doors are your, your lips and your jaws. Okay? Come on. Come on. <laughs> when one rises up at the sound of a bird, y'all know old people get up early. Huh? So this party gets up, she's up six o'clock, before six o'clock. <laughs> And all the daughters of music are brought low. You're hearing. That's right. Don't lose your hearing now. You can't hear. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> when somebody tell you, Sister Carter, tell you. You said, how about you say? <laughs> Because y'all know people that can't hear good, they're loud. Amen. Amen. They want to speak up. Oh, Lord. But usher while you're in your good health. You're in your good health. Ushers smell good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. Amen. Smell good. That's right. Have good body odor. Hygiene. Amen. Your breath. Amen. Needs to smell good. Yes. Huh? Amen. Cause nobody wants to smell your breath. They coming in that door and you say, Good morning. <laughs> Praise God. That's true. I'm telling you, I used to usher, so I know what happened. Keep some bits in your pocket. If you smoke. Now, nobody, is, if you're a Christian, you smoke smoke. But we do. Now, 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 you can say, you can tell me all you want to. And don't say that in the Bible. Don't say don't smoke in the Bible. Well, it does say if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Nobody wants to smell your cigarettes. Amen. 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 Huh? Amen. Amen. If you drink it. God, you're not supposed to be drinking. Well, I know the wine for the stomach's sake. Ain't nothing wrong with your stomach. Praise the Lord. That's one thing you just haven't given up yet. But nobody wants to smell your alcohol. Amen. Huh? Amen. Hmm? Preach it. And, 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 and let me say this. Thank you, Lord. Let me say this. Sometimes we, we, we you know, we, we, you usher your feet start hurting, you take your shoes off. Make sure your feet smell good. <laughs> huh? You the other way. So the balance said your arms too. Yes. Yes. And this is, this is, this is not just this is not just for the usher, but this is for everybody. This is for everybody. Now, I got my shoes off, but I tell you what, my feet don't stink. Bless the Lord. But we are to serve. Yes. <laughs> everybody. Please, please. Don't sit back and look for somebody to serve you. Yeah. But you be a help to somebody else. That's right. That's right. 
and God will bless you. There's promises in the Bible. Payday is coming. Huh? And we're going to get paid for what we do and what we don't do. Now, if, if what we do is good, then we're going to get a good reward. But what we do is bad, well, you ain't getting no reward. You're going to hear Jesus say, depart from me. Mm. I made you, but I don't know you. Bless the Lord. Praise God. But to those that are good, he's going to say, well done. Well done. My good and faithful servant. Good and faithful. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up. Yeah. I'll make you rule over many. And see, that's when, I'm, that, that's when you're great. When God tells you, come on up, I'll make you ruler over men. Then you're great. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. But see, down here, you're going to get some greatness down here, yes. too. Yes. Men will recognize you and honor you for what you do. Yes. Amen. That's right. So don't look at what somebody else is doing or what they're not doing. You do. Praise God. And I'm done. God has spoken. Amen. So let the church say amen.